win some Proland tires, win some Proland tires, or you can win, get this puppy out of here, a winch. And it even comes with its little worn sticker. How cool is that, eh? <laughs> so guys, that's gonna be this year's competition. Some guys need tires, some guys need a winch. Write me in the comment which of the two you need and I shall put you in the draw. Now let's get back into today's video. So on this week's show, we're gonna be testing the skid plate, the Gen 8 skid plate that I installed in the last build, in the Scrambler build. Now it is a slanted skid plate, but it's not slanted in the sense that it is sitting at an angle it is just slanted in the sense that it is flat at the bottom completely flat at the bottom and that the links are two centimeters higher than the conventional skid plates and that the front links are one centimeter higher so everything sits tucked up a little bit higher enabling the truck to stick on the high climbs a little bit more so the ace up the sleeve is all these trucks all these comp trucks they have no suspension. This is my Grand Cherokee comp truck, has no suspension, has a servo winch in front, it has dual foam, um, dual foams in it, and it is a really well running truck. It has a brushless motor, uh, 1,800 kV, and it is a really nice controllable truck. The Blazer, you've seen it on the show, I have no suspension in the front at all. I have the pen hack on the front shocks that don't allow a lot of droop on the front axle, but we have a lot of droop on the rear axle. This truck, comparing to these, has the possibility to actually still go down into the suspension, allowing me to go over obstacles, like creeping over an obstacle where these two trucks actually get stuck. And sometimes they get really stuck and we have to winch them out. But this truck, because of the way the, the chassis sits and the way the skid plate sits in there, and I am able to run this truck at a higher suspension rate than these trucks, where there's nothing left, these are as low as possible, this truck still has height in it. Let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. So first up is the comp truck. With a conventional skid plate, sits a little bit lower also because there's no suspension and no give it is as low as it can go let's see how this one does on the little downhills as it comes over an obstacle so with the brushless motor the 1800 perfect I love the slow crawl doesn't have that much wheel speed because of the 1800 kV brushless system in there but it is enough it is more than the scrambler with the reduction box now coming to the downhill that as it drops off the corner here let's see how the height of this truck because we have droop but we don't have a lot of height in this truck so here we already see we have a few issues whereby it's bottomed out and i have to wiggle myself through there we go made it but immediately rammed it against the, <laughs> the next rock right in front of it i have my metal or my aluminium bumper on there where the winch is hooked up Oop coming off the back there quite strongly hooking over to the left seeing if I can turn straight in or if I have to wait it out uh, touching the front bumper there going back a little bit oh yeah coming back to the winch it is hooked around the roof so immediately I have a longer winch when I do need it when there is a competition running that I don't waste time unspooling so climbing and everything, this is a comp truck set up to climb steep obstacles. So the climb part isn't the difficult part. It's coming over an obstacle where it will hook up the chassis because it doesn't have that height. Let's see if I can get around that front section. No, I didn't make it. 
One more back up. And yeah, we should be good. It's a little bit wet today, so I might need a bit of wheel speed in this. Come on. No, backing up. There we go. Ooh. Uh, that was a bit of a stupid one. Gimbal. Hello. Oh, Jesus. Here I am talking and explaining about all these things. Okay, let's get the truck focused again. Focus on that. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> let's try that again. Can I get myself out of this situation? Uh, truck is just a little bit too low. Come on, come on. There we go. Let's see. Taking it easy. There we go. I actually have to look at this video to see if it's actually good enough. Okay. Don't want that back wheel to slip down. Okay, easy does it. There we go. Finding grip in the front. And crawling past. Oh no, stuck again. One more backup. Let's see if we can take this through. Oh, it's too slippery. Just too slippery today. Oh, are you joking? Uh, I'm going to have to winch this one out of here. One, two, three. Hook it up. And here we go. There we go, and off it goes. Easy does it. Well done. <laughs> so we're getting rained out at the moment. It's just a slight drizzle, but let's hope we can get this run done <laughs> without it getting too wet. So our T-Rex 4 Blazer, you've seen it on the show before. Low suspension as well. No suspension or down suspension. We have droop, obviously. We've got the pen hack in the front shocks that we it doesn't have a lot of droop in the front but at the back it has its maximum droop the setup is equal to the other two trucks from the suspension and the shock setup but it has a low standard skid plate and let's see how this one does i'm going to go up to the camera right now to make sure we don't get another wiggle and off we go this truck is stock drivetrain everything is stock still has its normal brushed motor that the TRX 4 Sport came with. Steering servo is still the original, amazingly. But we are running the Mickey Thompson uh, Badger Claw on this truck at the moment. Let's see how it does on this. Also, bottoming out, getting a bit stuck, managing, but same as the Jeep pump truck and coming around yeah my camera is still following <laughs> does the TRX4 have a better steering angle come on can we do something about that no nope. okay a little backup and slowly does it easy easy does it it does seem like a slow crawl the uphill is not really the problem that's not really what we're testing today we are testing the drop off an obstacle to see if the truck is going to bottom out and get stuck. So both of these trucks up to now got a little stuck, not drastically, but every now and then I do have that issue that there is a drop and I really get stuck and I need to take it with speed, otherwise I just can't get over it. Let's take this up, oh, same here, getting stuck as well. It is just too wet and it becomes too slippery well i got over that quite nicely uh -oh -oh. let's see if i can get that back tire back up there and with speed 
No. Jeez, same position. Can't believe this is the identical same position. <laughs> I got myself into twice with two different trucks. Let's winch this out. Winching out. As you can hear, I bought this winch second hand. <laughs> I think I need to strip this winch, give it a bit of grease and put it back together again. We're going to go and hook it up to this little rock over here. Still getting it, reeling the winch in. And off we go. Now this is becoming a pain in the butt. <laughs> when you get older, you actually can't run up and down your own obstacles. <laughs> anyway, let's get the Scrambler Jeep down here and let's see how he does. And it's time for the Scrambler. So as you can see, the Scrambler does have a little bit of suspension left in it but I can afford to have the suspension a little bit higher because my skid plate is slanted in the sense of, first of all, it's tucked up and second of all, the back links are higher than normal, two centimeters higher than normal. The front links are one centimeter higher than normal, one centimeter higher than normal and everything is tucked in a little bit higher, forcing the nose of the truck to stay down on the obstacle. Let's see how much clearance the scrambler has on this run. So I am running the standard TRX4 Sport tires on this uh, with some, how do you say, <laughs> modified foams. So the outside is a little bit softer, but the foam is still original. I have a video on that. If you guys are interested, I'll put a link down in the description. Let me actually come up to the camera make sure that everything is running perfectly on the camera side so my reduction box is doing very nicely i have a 25 kilo servo steering servo doing a very good job and also with those axles i am getting a very nice steering angle here we see i did not touch at all the truck just slid over there completely, it didn't even scrape. That was actually a 100% bonus for me. I'm able to steer in without a backup. And let's see if my performance is the same. Going up here, taking it very easy. Obviously it is a bit slippery now, I might need a bit of wheel speed on this. And there we go. So my hill climb performance is still the same although the truck sits higher and I have a little suspension left in my shocks but that is due to that skid plate so here we have the same issue again now my issue is I don't have a winch on this truck if I do get into trouble I need to get one of the other trucks down to winch it out <laughs> okay let's see if I can make this I do not have a lot of wheel speed on this truck boy I have a very high ground clearance so I am able to actually maneuver this truck out of that situation there we go perfect so twice I was able to get the truck into a better position than the other two. I think I've, I think I've finished this video just in time because I am getting drizzled out at the moment. But we have a clear winner. So this setup, I love this setup a lot more because the truck can just do so many more little things. It's just that that little touch that I, I would even say it's ten percent. I'd say it's it's like more than ten percent because of how the skid plate actually enables the truck to sit higher, 
have more suspension there's still droop in the suspension i don't have the pen hack in the front it is still completely on full droop so we can get full droop out of both axles whereby on the trx4 the droop is very limited so it will get stuck and it will bottom out so both of these comp trucks do bottom out quite a lot but i would say this skid plate from the gen 8 although i 3d printed it makes this a clear winner <laughs> so guys that's it for me for this week thanks for watching see you next time bye